a joint work with Marco Di Sumo, who's here, uh, Mariana De Santis from Rome, and Francesco De Santis from Padua. Uh, you probably teach integer programming, and uh, you teach the idea of cutting planes for integer programming. You don't know how to solve an integer program. You know how to solve a linear program, so you forget integrality constraints. You solve the linear program in relaxation. You get an optimal solution of the LP. If the LP is integral, you are happy. If the LP is not integral, you find an inequality, which is called the cutting plane, which is satisfied by all the integer points uh, and uh, in your set, but it's violated and you recurse. And uh, this is uh, he agrees. <laughs> But uh, it's much easier to say than to do it. Because uh, uh, usually, uh, when you have a cutting plane algorithm, you are given the optimal solution of the LP relaxation. And in order to cut it away, if you want to cut away the solution, uh, you need the solution to be extreme. Because if this solution is convex combination of integer points, you will never cut it away. So you need some extremality property of your solution, and uh, which, uh, in general, you cannot guarantee that it exists, that you can enforce it. And maybe you want to cut off, uh, maybe not the solution, but all the optimal phase of the LP relaxation. But then the optimal phase uh, is a set that you have no control on the dimension, and you don't know whether it contains an integer point or not. So you may cut off. So it's difficult. That's not that easy. Uh, and then uh, once you have uh, decided that you can cut off something, you have to find a cutting plane in your arsenal, which is now growing with lots of research. But you have to find a cutting plane. And then <laughs> you need to prove that your algorithm like, terminates. And all of these are hard questions. In fact, uh, I think that everybody knows uh, the Schwatter cuts, the Gomery cuts. Uh, even if this set is a rational polyhedron, pointed, and you have a vertex, I think that in order to cut off this vertex, you need to do Hermit normal form. And if it is a general convex set, uh, probably only Dan Dadouche can do it. So you need an arsenal that, even for Gomery cuts, you need an arsenal that is highly non-trivial. But now, in uh, some uh, several decades ago, there were some smart people, and they said, well, uh, this is uh, all, you know, something esoteric. If this is a LP that I solve with the simplex method, then this is in standard form. So these are equations, and the variables are non-negative. And uh, in this case, you all know and teach in class that uh, once you have the final tableau and the final tableau uh, is not an it does not give an integer solution, then you have uh, immediately a Gomery cut, a Schwarzer Gomery cut that stares at you and is violated, and you can add. So you don't need to do you don't need the dander. He can. Uh, but even with the dander. <laughs> But even with that, so with this machinery, and even if you had uh, Lex Scriber or whatever that proved finite convergence of the closure for a rational polyhedra, in order to prove that this cutting plane method determinates, you need to add something, to add a new ingredient, which is Lex So that's this. That's the problem. OK. <clears throat> and now we all know, thanks to stuff, what is uh, lexicographic ordering of uh, you have vectors in Rn. And you say that this is lexicographic smaller than this one if the first coordinate in which these two vectors look at the first coordinate in which these two vectors differ, well, the first coordinate is smaller than this coordinate. So that's the alphabetic ordering 
that's lexical, that's important. And uh, now here is uh, a nice polyhedron. I hope it's not known. Suppose that you have an integer point that is non negative in R. And you look at all integer vectors that are lexicographic greater than or equal than this vector. What is the clarification, You're not sorting the vectors, I'm like. No. I'm not doing it. No, 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 no. I'm not sorting. You cannot permute. This is a highly sensitive on the ordering. You cannot change the order. So you look, you fix. This is the smallest index. You cannot permute it. And what you want is the convex hull of the non-negative integer vectors that are greater than or equal than this vector. And since uh, Fabrizio was good enough not to erase, you have this point, which is integer. Can you erase this? Wow. I still can do uh, These points have uh, the first coordinate at 0. These points have the first coordinate at 1. So they are certainly smaller. These points have the first coordinate at 2, but the second coordinate is smaller than 3. So the integer points that are non-negative and less greater are the ones above here and all the ones here. So this convex hull is this second. OK? Why well, did I mention that's not too hard? But uh, what is this convex hull in there? Can you characterize this polyhedron? This polyhedron we will see as uh, not too many vertices and not too many facets. But uh, the facets will be interesting objects. OK? Uh, okay. Now, there's a, you have an integer point. And you have an important quality, which is the largest index, the largest position in which the coordinate is a positive. So think of uh, x to be this one, to be this vector. So here, this is the third largest index in which this, com this number is zero is positive. So after that, you have only zeros here. You may have some zeros here. But this is the largest, the highest index in which is positive. And now, these are the vertices of this object. The first one is this vector. And now you do the following. Take this position, set it down to zero, and look at the previous position and add a one. So pick this one, shift it down to 0. Pick the previous one, which may be 0, but bump it up by 1. And now, out of this vector, you repeat the same process. So you take this position, you set it to 0, you look at the previous position, and you raise it by 1. So just before. Ending, you have this vector, this position has been bumped up by 1, and this is non negative, and the last one will be this one bumped up by 1. These points are the vertices of this set, and so the number of vertices is exactly this leading index. And the recession cone is the non negative one. That's your point. These are the vertices. But we want to optimize, so we would like to have an inequality description of this object. And uh, obviously, this immediately gives a compact, for few vertices, gives a compact formulation in the extended space. Just take it. Here are the, some inequalities. I am not, these coefficients, 
depend essentially on the product of uh, the subsequent value of this vector x. You, I mean, it's not that important. And they define one inequality which is valid for your polyhedron. Uh, let's, for instance, uh, this inequality, it's exactly an inequality of this type. I don't think that uh, I have really time to explain this. So you have one inequality. And uh, given a vector bar x, you can write as many inequalities as uh, the leading index. So the ma as many inequalities as the leading index. And uh, together with no negativity, these inequalities give you a completely redundant description of this uh, lex polyton, lex ecography, not lex. Okay? So you can describe this. So, and uh, I will. If I was a young researcher, I would give you the proof. I will not do it, but it's a very nice. <laughs> What's the use of this? Oh, yeah, there is one thing. I. dealt with this lexicographic ordering, which is the, stand, the standard ordering that you know. But uh, what you can do is uh, pick a lattice basis, so a set of integral uh, vector that spans uh, lattice. And you can define an ordering, a lexicographic ordering, according to this lattice basis by saying that this vector is smaller than this vector if and only if they are different. And the first time, the first index in this sequence for which these two inner products differ, you have that this inner product is smaller than this inner product. And uh, since uh, lattice basis uh, maps, uh, gives a linear transformation that maps integers into integers, you have uh, exactly the same uh, inequality. Here you had xi, but now you have, uh, you can put uh, these vectors and that's. So this, uh, what I'm saying is not restricted to the lexicographic ordering which is induced by the canonical basis. It's OK. And now here is the problem that I want to solve. Suppose that you have a set, subset of Rn, which is a closed set, because you want to be able to minimize. So to really not, you are not happy with the infima if you want to get cotton planes, because if, uh, and it's compact. So you're sure that either the set of is empty or the minimum exists. I have to say, uh, OK, I'm not saying philosophical. So it's a closed set, and it's a bounded set. That's all that you know. And uh, integer linear optimization of this set is the following. I give you an integral objective function that I want to minimize over the integer points in this set. Okay? Mind you that this set uh, is, co is not even a connected set. So it may be a set of uh, ink spots. It's not even connected. It's not convex. It's not connected. It's not anything. It's, but it's compact. You have to, that's what you need. 
And uh, what I want to do is uh, solve this problem, find an optimal solution, which or prove that this set does not contain any integer points. And uh, the only weapon that I have in hand is that I can solve the linear problem in relaxation. So I can minimize my function over the set S plus some, th this is a polyhedron, plus some additional inequalities. I have an algorithm that is able to minimize this function over the set, possibly with uh, some additional inequalities. And uh, my question is, out of this, can I design a cutting plane algorithm that only uses cutting planes to solve this problem? Mind you that uh, uh, we are talking about a problem, you can always close the set x into a box and enumerate everything. So I mean, yeah. you have to be <laughs> you know, aware that uh, this is. But if I only give you a black box algorithm that solves this, can you find a cutting plane algorithm that is finite? Yeah, but why can't you uh, do what you just said? Well, that's what I wanted to do. No, but I mean, do the enumerate. Oh, I mean, and this is not coming back. No, but you, you can say uh, x1 is equal to a, x2 is equal to b, x3 is equal to c. You can use my, why don't you use my cuts? This is faster. <laughs> OK? So what you can do is the following, which you are not going to read, but I'm going to explain. This is the set S. And what you can do by, since you can optimize, suppose that I want to minimize the first four. So I am going to find my lexicographic ordering. And so I will minimize x1, which if my picture was better, would be all this part. And out, of the, and out of this, I will minimize now the second coordinate. So I will find this point. OK? And now, what I basically know, it's easy to find. This is a fractional point. The first coordinate is integral, and the second coordinate is fractional. So what I can easily find is the lex min integer point that is uh, lex greater than this one. So it's the integer point that is uh, lex greater than this one, but among the lex greater points, it's the smallest one, which is this one. OK. And among, uh, now I look at my q, my lex polito out of this. And among these inequalities, there is one that is very, that is the one that has the largest support. And I am sure that cuts away this point. So I add it, and I will cut away this part, and I will recurse. So I will uh, find. Uh, Minimize x1. Now this part has gone away. And when x1 is minimized, I minimize x2. And I find again the integer point that is lax greater than this one. And I find the corresponding inequality. And now let's say that if I minimize x1, and subject to this, I minimize x2, I get to this point, in which now the coordinate of x1 has become fractional. So the lex point that is uh, um, <coughs> integer and uh, the smallest possible, but lex greater than this point, is this point. And I have this inequality that proves that my set does not contain any integer point. Uh, 
and this algorithm is finite. Again, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's finite because you can close this set into the, a box, because, and uh, you can uh, you will only consider points and associated inequalities that are associated that are. Uh, so, lexicography has, is, has, is a nice way to find cuts. And the cuts are the lex this lexicographic cuts that define the convex hull of this uh, lex great polyhedron. And uh, again, you don't need all your machinery uh, to solve uh, this problem. The Gomery cuts are the next cuts. Um, but the next cuts and the split cuts are two independent families. There are split cuts that are not lex cuts, and there are lex cuts that cannot be split cuts. So these are independent families. And uh, as you may expect, it's not that hard to construct a set S in which, in order to find uh, either that it contains no integer point, you have to go through an exponential sequence of cuts. And uh, the question, uh, now this is uh, non-convex, uh, um, uh, non-linear, integer programming is fashionable. Are these cuts already used? I have no answer. This is what I don't know. What uh, you may, the first uh, observation that uh, my so-called uh, friends do uh, real integer programming is that these, these uh, coefficients are of this type. So they grow from small to very big. And uh, these people don't like these type of cuts because they say that they have a high dynamism. But uh, remember that you have uh, a cut for any possible lattice spaces. And uh, once you choose the lattice spaces, you can order the vector, and this produces a different cut, because it produces a different lex ordering in this basis. So maybe looking at S and maybe flat parts, it's uh, easy to find good lex cuts. But, uh, uh, remember that uh, the only take home message of all of this is that uh, you really don't need, if you read the convergence proofs, finiteness of cutting plane algorithm, they are technical, tedious, and everything. But in order to design, cutting plane algorithm for these problems and prove convergence, uh, you can do it very easily. So the only, I would say, the major, the nice contribution, which I hope is new, is really the characterization of this point. And uh, I think we that. Any questions from the case? Do you have any upper bound on, except for finite, on the number of integers? Sure. Uh, the number of integers, you take a set S, you close it in a box, okay. you enumerate the okay. integer points, okay. and that's the, oh, that's the only upper bound. Um, certainly, this upper bound, uh, uh, for instance, if your set S is enclosed in the 0, 1 cube, this is the tight band. I have examples. Whether 
you could save whether if S is non-convex, you may end up to enumerate. Remember that you don't know anything about S. You only know to optimize, but you're blind. You don't know what it is. So you cannot hope for much. If S is non-convex, because I'm not saying that S is convex, you can, I can construct you an example in which you enumerate all the points. But if S is convex and say very wide in one dimension, so you have many, many, many points, maybe you can do, um, the, my construction doesn't work. So maybe you can do that. It would be very, although I don't think, a good question would be, say, say that the, the length of this box in this dimension is L. Can it be like 2 to the N log L or something in case of convexity? I don't know. I, I mean, I would suspect in case of convexity that you can tie it to you know, nice lattice bases and that kind of stuff. And, uh, but anyway. Any um, Any other questions? Uh, one last remark. Uh, our, we've been working on this for a long time, although maybe the result is not that. Uh, we had a much weaker family of cuts, and it's due to the suggestion of uh, our friend Giacomo Zambelli that said, look at this polyhedron and look at the converse hole. So we are thankful. Okay, thank you, David.